Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial for ethical hacking and penetration testing via Cal Linux. So before I proceed today, what I would be teaching is uh, footprinting and reconnaissance. So before I go ahead deep into what it exactly is, before I go ahead uh, more into letting you know how we can go ahead and use Cal Linux for penetration testing or hacking into some random stuff, I'll teach you how we need to first go ahead with that. So there are a few layers of hacking that need, you need to know before you can go ahead and hack into any kind of stuff. Let's say it may be a PC or laptop or cell phone PDA or in any company server or anything. So there are layer of things that you need to know. You need to follow these specific protocols before you can get into deep hacking. So today I would be teaching you and as you can see uh, over here that we have lots of stuff over here when you check cal linux we have n number of security tools so you might be wondering what is information gathering vulnerability analysis web application password attacks and many more so i would first go ahead and teach you the different layers of ethical hacking today so let's uh, open the web browser and go ahead and check i'll I have some or the other real let's check uh, years of ethical hacking the few things that you need to know before you can proceed uh, into detailed stuff. So I would be teaching you that today. The first thing that we would be needing would be uh, to know that, okay, the first thing is that uh, we need to go ahead and gather the information. And uh, then we need to go ahead and know whom we are attacking, what are the different layers for that. That means uh, what uh, are the countermeasures that they can go ahead and uh, take against us. So these are the few things that I would be teaching you today. So the let me check. Okay, I think that it's uh, checking the layers of OSI. So I'll just type steps of ethical hacking. Perfect. Okay. So these are the things which we will go through once we go in detail related to uh, ethical hacking. The first step that we would be look looking today would be the footprinting. Who is NS lookup search engines and social networking sites? After that, scanning and enumeration. There are computer ports. Which ports are open? Which ports are not? And what would be the application services? Then trojans and backdoors, viruses, and then finally the hacking and exploitation. That would be the buffer overflow, spoofing, or different types of attacks, which includes even DDoS. This is not over here as of now. But uh, yeah, these are things we would be te I would be teaching you. So let's take a first look at footprinting. So I'll just go ahead and show you. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what are the footprinting tools we have. And after that, we I will explain it to you what is footprinting. So let's check. Okay, we should be okay here. As you can see, we have uh, these information gathering tools are all no, also known as footprinting tools. And as you can see that we have loads of things over here. Service fingerprinting, routing analysis, uh, OS fingerprinting as to gathering information about our related OS and loads of other stuff. So let's first know what exactly footprinting terminology is uh, and what all things are included in that. So footprinting is just that we need to go ahead and gather information about specific people. Okay, let me check the updates. By the time it gets updated, let's go ahead and start with the footprinting terminology. Okay, so footprinting and reconnaissance is what I would be, would be teaching learning today. So what is footprinting? These are the several ways of gathering information about footprinting. So before we go deep into this concept, it is important to know the basic terminology used in footprinting. And these terms will help you understand the concept of footprinting and its structures. So open source or passive information gathering, that is the first one. So open source of pass or passive information gathering, PIG, that's what I call. It is the easiest way to collect information about the target organization. It refers to the process of gathering information from open sources or publicly available sources such as newspapers, television, social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, or good or blogs, etc. And using these, you can gather information such as network boundaries as to where they are actually located, their geolocation, IP addresses, reachable via internet, operating systems, web servers, which are used by the target network, TCP and UDP services in each system, which are open and which are not, control mechanisms, system architectures, intrusion detec detection uh, systems, and many more. So that is what is included in uh, open source and passive information. After that, we have active information gathering. So in active information gathering, process attackers mainly focus on the employees of the target organization. Attackers try to extract information from the employees by conducting social engineering on the site visits or interviews or questionnaires, something similar to that. After that, we have anonymous footprinting. This refers to the process of collecting information from sources anonymously so that your efforts cannot be traced. Uh, at this point of time, people normally use uh, Tor browsers, which are mostly famous in anonymous web browsing. 
So yeah, and after that we have pseudo anonymous footprinting, and these refers to the process of collecting information from the sources that have been published on internet, but it is not directly linked to the author's name. This information may be published under a different name, or the author may have a well-established uh, pen name. We can say means a random pseudo name, or the author may also be a corporate or government official, and he may be prohibited from uh, posting under his or her original name. So, irrespective of the reason for finding the author's name, uh, collecting information from such sources, sources are called as pseudo-anonymous. So, after that we have lots of other uh, types of uh, information gathering which are organizational or private footprinting or internet footprinting. Uh, so, in footprinting, we normally collect the basic information about the target network, determine the operating systems used, platforms running, web servers, then we perform the WHOIS or DNS network and organizational queries, and finally we find the vulnerabilities and exploits for launching these attacks. So you might be wondering that how Facebook is very useful in that. So I could have also, and you might also be wondering that why only Facebook? Why not, uh, let's say, uh, we have Twitter as well over here, then why not Twitter or why not Orkut? The reason being that Facebook is the most popular and people don't hesitate uh, to give out information on Facebook. Let's say for example, and even if they don't want to give out information, they may just simply give out without even them knowing that. Let's say for example, you want to search a person on Facebook and you have find out his uh, name. And uh, if you want to go ahead and access his, let's say for example, Facebook profile, you want to hack into that. And when you uh, go ahead and let's say you click forgot the password uh, option and then it will ask you what is the date of birth of the person. And just one example, because that is a normal question that people keep. So you want to know the date of birth of that person. So what you would do, you would go out and search into his profile and you may not be able to get that. So or you may call and you may do a social engineering to get his date of birth or something like that. But there is another way, even if you do social engineering stuff like by calling them, there's still a way that they can trace you out a, by looking up at the phone number until unless you have not created a fake account and you have created a fake a cell phone number as well. But that is uh, getting into deep stuff and it may also uh, have different expenditures as to getting a phone, getting a cell phone, getting a uh, SIM card and then creating fake uh, IDs to get this fake SIM card. So instead of doing that, why not go ahead and use some just uh, social engineering techniques such as uh, just guessing and gathering information. So the first part would be just go ahead and uh, look up his, uh, if you just want uh, the let's say year of birth, just go ahead and look uh, at his colleagues with whom he has taken pics. Let's say for example, if uh, let's say for XYZ the guy's name is let's say Mr. Smith and uh, he has a f another friend whose name is Mr. Adam and they went to the same school and they had they were in the same class and everything. So it's probably that um, he might be, let's say for example, Mr. Adam's age is uh, 1989. So the uh, Mr. Smith's age would probably be 1988 or 89 or 90. He won't be much bigger or lesser than that. So you can just go ahead and try all these out options out and you can get at the date of birth. So now you know how you can go ahead and gather such information just by looking at someone's Facebook profile. You don't even want to know who his friends are just by looking at his photos that he have uploaded. You can get a lot loads of information. So in security research, Facebook is called as a treasure trove of personally identifiable information. Uh, a report by Imperva uh, revealed that users' general information can often include date of birth, home addresses, and sometimes even the mother's maiden name, allowing hackers to access this and other websites and applications created created by targeting uh, spear phishing campaigns. Uh, in detail, a concept called friend mapping is also there when an attacker can get further knowledge of a user's friend circle having access to their account and posing as a trusted friend, they may even cause some uh, dam mayhem or damage. And these also, this can include transfer of funds and even extortion. So when asked why people, why Facebook is so important to hackers, uh, then the Imperva security senior strategist Noah, uh, ba uh, Noah Barsioff said that people also add work friends on Facebook. So a team leader, let's say for example, can be identified and this can lead to a corporate data being accessed. So you can uh, go ahead and gather information, create fake accounts and gather information from there. So in more extreme cases, even if Facebook's administrator rights can be accessed, although it is said that it requires more effort on the hacker's side and it is not prevalent, but it is a holy grail of uh, attackers as it provides a, a hacker with data of all the users and not just one user. So in protection, it is set out to rule that um, you need to go ahead and only access the website when you are using the SSL security across the whole website. But 
that's also not that effective because people can also do man in the middle attacks and they can also strip the SSL layer off. So nowadays everything is possible. So these are the ways as to how we can go ahead and get into footprinting. Now the next question that you would be asking is why footprinting? So I'll get into it deeper into that but that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial I'll be getting into, into much more information about uh, the ethical hacking and why it is considered as illegal hacking and I'll help you more uh, understand about the footprinting tools, their threats and their countermeasures.